Prime Minister assures investigation for improvement in customs immigration operation. Federal government assets reach more than one trillion ringgit. Good evening and Salam Malaysia Madani. You're watching Malaysia Tonight with me, I'm Jessica Lee. Unaccompanied by ministers or top leaders, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim today made a surprise visit to the Customs and Immigration Officers of the Kuala Lumpur International Airport, or KLIA. In his visit, which lasted 30 minutes, Datuk Sri Anwar said he found several problems in the two departments and an investigation for improvement with appropriate actions would follow. Cuma ada beberapa mungkin ada beberapa masalah kita akan siasatan untuk perbaiki atau kalau ada kesilapan akan ambil tindakan yang wajar. Saya uh, cuba teliti langkah-langkah diambil setakat ini dan uh, saya lihat memang immigration buat respon yang sangat baik yang positif. Yang kita harus kenal pasti ialah beberapa kelompok kecil yang masih uh, tidak mampu membawa perubahan termasuk uh, Depan dengan beberapa tuduhan. He said a thorough investigation will be done, adding that preliminary discussions will be held at the cabinet level on Wednesday. Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister Datuk Sri Tiong King Singh recently dropped a bombshell by claiming that a culture of corruption was prevalent among some immigration officers at the country's main gateway. The Finance Ministry will work with the Communications and Digital Ministry to tackle scam cases involving the exchange of e Belia Rahma credits for cash. Deputy Finance Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Mazlan said MOF will hold a meeting with KKD tomorrow to discuss the matter, which is believed to have been offered by irresponsible parties on social media. Besok saya akan um, menghadiri satu pertemuan dengan Kementerian uh, SKMM, uh, Kementerian Komunikasi, Kementerian Komunikasi dan uh, belah petang uh, saya akan berbincang dengan mereka supaya uh, perkara ini di uh, highlight di uh, laman sosial uh, Kementerian Komunikasi termasuk TV, radio uh, supaya 2 juta Belia tidak tertipu dengan skamer yang uh, cuba menunaikan RM200 uh, dan diberi, diberi secara tunai. On why students of Teachers Education Institute or IPGs are being excluded from the e Belia Rahma credit program, Datuk Sri Ahmad said this was because they were already receiving a RM450 ringgit monthly allowance. Barisan Nasional or BN Chairman Datuk Sri Ahmad Zaid Hamidi hopes leaders of Gabungan Parti Sarawak or GPS would go to the ground to help BN candidates in the six state elections. The Deputy Prime Minister said he wants the agenda of political stability in Sarawak to be an example which could be adopted by BN machinery during the campaign. The AMNO president said he had discussed with the Secretary General of GPS, Datuk Sri Alexander Nantalingi, to bring GPS leaders to assist in the campaign in the six states. Pemimpin pemimpin daripada GPS untuk membantu calon calon kita di Semenanjung ya, dalam enam pilihan raya negeri. Okay. He said this at a media conference after the Mararau Negiling Tikai event organized by Parti Rakyat Sarawak or PRS in Sri Aman today. Speaking at the ceremony, Datuk Sri Aman Zahid said political leaders should bring the agenda of resolving the people's problems which can be better implemented with political stability. Now, see allocation negotiations between Pakatan Harapan, PH and BN for the upcoming state election in Selangor have been completed. According to State PH Chairman Datuk Sri Amiruddin Shari, it was now up to PH Chairman Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim and his BN counterpart Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi to finalise the proposed candidacies. Yeah, it's not necessary. 
Dah selesai Selangor discuss. So banyak gagang kursi di Selangor selesai. Oh, okay. kita selesai. Selesai bagi kami tapi yang di pusat dia dia discuss. Sebenarnya memang itu sendiri. Datuk Sri Amiruddin was met after the official opening of the Splash Mania Water Park at Gamuda Cove in Bunting. On today's program, he said the water theme park with surrounding development and commercial areas was the latest attraction in southern Selangor. The 6.47 hectare Splash Mania Water Theme Park developed by Gamuda Land was open to the public since last February and offers 39 attractions including 24 slides. Meanwhile, Kelantan PKR has submitted the names of shortlisted candidates for the upcoming state polls to the party leadership. Now, PKR Vice President Nick Nasmini Ahmad said the names will be announced by party president Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim. Senarai pendek dia dah ada. Uh, nanti dia akan disediakan kalau di peringkat parti keadilan. Uh, Jabatan Pilihan Raya Pusat, pengarah dia ialah uh, YB Rafizi Ramli dan akan di uh, apa tu keputusan akhir ialah tentulah uh, Presiden lah, Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim. Nick Nazmi, who is also Kelantan and Trungganu PKR Chairman, said PH has been allocated 14 seats to contest in Kelantan but he could not confirm how many of those will be contested by PKR. Now in Kedah, the police will step up monitoring at 20 locations that are categorised as hotspots during the state election to be held soon. State Police Chief Dato Fisol Saleh said the move would facilitate the police personnel's duties and ensure the safety of all parties. He said these hotspots did not mean there will be a big fight or extreme events to happen, but rather to make it easier for the police to increase the number of officers in the areas concerned. Now, last June, then Inspector General of Police Tan Sri Akrosani Abdullah Sani was quoted as saying that the police had identified 190 hotspots in the six states involved in the coming state elections. Selangor has the highest number of hotspots with 70, followed by Trungganu, 66. Kada 20, Negeri Sembilan 16, Kelantan 16 and Pulau Pinang 2. Coming up next, woman killed in crime of passion, believed by ex-husband. Diani Pertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Bilal Shah and Raja Permaisuri Agong Tunku Haja Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria have arrived home safely from Saudi Arabia after performing their Hajj. The special aircraft carrying their majesties and their delegation arrived at the Bungaraya complex of the Kuala Lumpur International Airport at 1.10 p.m. today. Al Sultan Abdullah and Raja Permaisuri Agung, who was accompanied by the Regent of Pahang, Tengku Hassan Al Ibrahim Alam Shah, left for the Holy Land on the 21st of June. The royal family was met on arrival by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim and his wife, Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail, as well as Chief Secretary to the Government, Tan Sri Mamazuki Ali. This was followed by a prayer recited by Federal Territories Mufti, Datuk Professor Madia Dr. Lukman Abdullah. In an Istana Negara Facebook posting, the Anipatuan Agung expressed his gratitude to Allah for the blessings that allowed His Majesty and the Raja Permaisuri Agung to be in good health and smoothly complete the fifth pillar of Islam. Al Sultan Abdullah also expressed his appreciation to the Saudi Arabian government for its thorough preparations and success in hosting some two million pilgrims for the Hajj season this year. Istana Negara also informed that Al Sultan Abdullah had extended the highest appreciation to the Saudi government to accept 31,000 pilgrims from Malaysia and an additional 1,000 for this year's Hajj pilgrimage. Istana Negara stated that Al Sultan Abdullah had also invited Crown Prince Mohammed for a visit to Malaysia. Two Malaysian men died in Mecca last Friday, bringing the total to four pilgrims from the country to die in the Holy Land during the current Hajj pilgrimage this season. Now, Minister in the Prime Minister's Department of Religious Affairs, Senator Datuk Dr. Momanaim Mokhtar said the two pilgrims 
both men aged 72 and 60, died due to lung infection as well as a stroke and heart failure. Matian ketiga ini adalah merupakan seorang jemaah lelaki berusia 72 tahun dan punca kematian adalah disebabkan jangkitan kuman pada paru-paru. Manakala kematian keempat pula adalah jemaah lelaki juga berusia 60 tahun dan punca kematian adalah serangan angin ahmar dan kegagalan jantung. Met by reporters, he said there are 95 pilgrims at the Tabung Haji Mecca Treatment Centre and 15 Malaysian pilgrims in Saudi Arabian hospitals. Meanwhile, Dato Mama Naim said the Mashaya operation, which is the culmination of the Hajj, has officially ended with the return of all Malaysian pilgrims to Mecca from Mina. The Malaysian pilgrims will start leaving for their homeland starting Wednesday, 5th of July, and the last flight is expected on the 31st of July with a total of 98 flights. Now, the federal government's assets have been valued at more than one trillion ringgit so far. According to Deputy Finance Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Mazlan, the figure was based on the Accountants General's Department and the Property Valuation and Services Department's assessment involving government land and buildings made over a period of 10 years since 2013. He said the value of the federal government's assets is expected to continue to rise as the valuation process is ongoing, as other assets, including those abroad, have yet to be assessed. The valuation is expected to continue to rise with a 30 billion ringgit increase this year. Kerajaan Persekutuan ini ada banyak aset. Uh, asetnya sedang dikira. Uh, saya yakin dia lebih 1 trilion. Ya. Aset kerajaan persekutuan ini lebih 1 trilion. Berapa lebih itu uh, belum lagi uh, ditentukan. Ya. Uh, sebab kita masih lagi membuat uh, pengiraan uh, terhadap aset-aset kerajaan persekutuan. He said the evaluation process is ongoing to identify the value of the federal government's assets, which is hoped to exceed the 1.5 trillion ringgit national debt. The Prime Minister, Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim, was previously reported as saying that the national debt, including liabilities, has reached 1.5 trillion ringgit and needs to be dealt with immediately. Now, the project to expand and upgrade the Sultan Ismail Petra Airport in Pengkalan Chepa, Kota Baru, is expected to be delayed by 25.79% or 143 days compared to the original schedule. The project has reached a progress rate of 30.58%. Masalah dari segi pekerja, pekerja mahir dan juga uh, daripada uh, segi masalah utility tapi semua tu kita sedang bantu untuk uh, selesaikan. Uh, sekarang uh, pihak MOT ya, dengan pihak kontraktor telah memberi tumpuan khusus uh, dan uh, untuk mengatasi masalah-masalah yang dihadapi supaya uh, projek uh, pembesaran uh, dan penaik tarafan uh, lapangan terbang tu dapat uh, kembali mengikut uh, jadual. The Sultan Ismail Petra Airport expansion and upgrade project is to improve facilities and increase the capacity of the airport terminal from 1.5 million passengers to 4 million passengers per annum at a cost of over 440 million ringgit. A 42-year-old single mother was killed, believed to have been stabbed by her ex-husband in an incident in Taman Desa Darul Naim, Kota Baru, early today. Now, the victim's body was found with 13 injuries in the living room of a rented house at about 3 a.m. Klantan Police Chief Dato Mamazaki Harun said a 51-year-old man had been arrested to facilitate the investigation. Preliminary investigation found that the suspect is the victim's second ex-husband and the couple was divorced six years ago. The police did not rule out jealousy as the motive for the murder. According to witnesses, an argument was heard between the victim and the suspect, believed to be due to the man suspecting his ex-wife of having an affair with another man. 
The police have seized a knife believed to have been used in the killing and are investigating the case under Section 302 of the Penal Code for murder. Still ahead, riots in France continue as family buries teenager. Sayalah bahawa anda bertanggungjawab terhadap diri anda sendiri. Anda bertanggungjawab untuk mengatakan tidak. Jangan biarkan orang lain mempengaruhi anda. Kenal pasti hak anda, keperluan anda dan perasaan anda. Hanya sekali ia boleh meragut. Welcome back. A Thai elephant gifted to Sri Lanka two decades ago was flown back to its birth country today after a diplomatic spat over the animal's alleged mistreatment. The Thai authorities had gifted the 29-year-old Mutu Raja to Sri Lanka in 2001, but demanded it back last year after allegations it was tortured while housed at a Buddhist temple in the island nation's south. The 4,000-kilogram mammal arrived in Thailand just after 2 p.m., having been transported inside a specially constructed giant steel crate on board a cargo plane. After touching down in Chiang Mai, the elephant will be quarantined at a nearby nature reserve. The chief veterinarian at the Dehiwala Zoo told AFP that Mutu Raja was in pain and covered in abscesses when it was rescued from its previous abode last year. Animal welfare groups said that the elephant had been forced to work with a logging crew and its wounds had been neglected. The elephant will undergo hydrotherapy to treat a remaining injury on its front left leg when it returns to Thailand. The thousands rallied in Australia to back a campaign to recognise the country's indigenous people in the constitution ahead of a referendum later this year after a recent dip in support for the change. Now, the referendum seeks to amend the constitution and established an advisory body to give Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people a direct say in policies that impact them. Yes, 23, the group behind more than 25 rallies nationwide, said around 3,000 people attended the event in Sydney's Prince Alfred Park. It expected up to 25,000 people to participate across the country in total. The day of action comes after support for the referendum appeared to be ebbing, according to a poll last month, which showed no ahead for the first time, 51% to 49%. Opponents, including some indigenous people, have said the proposal lacks detail and will divide Australians. The rioting across France appeared to be less intense on Saturday as tens of thousands of police had been deployed in cities across the country after the funeral of a teenager of North African descent whose shooting by police sparked nationwide unrest. President Emmanuel Macron has postponed a state visit to Germany to handle the worst crisis for his leadership since the Yellow Vest protests paralysed much of France in the late 2018. Some 45,000 police were on the streets with specialised elite units, armoured vehicles and helicopters brought in to reinforce its three largest cities, Paris, Lyon and Marseille. At early Sunday morning, the situation was calmer than the previous four nights, although there are some tension in central Paris and sporadic clashes in the Mediterranean cities of Marseille, Nice and the eastern city of Strasbourg. The Interior Ministry said 719 people had been arrested during a fifth night, although it described the violence as lower in intensity. A powerful tornado whipped through central Alberta, destroying homes and uprooting trees in rural parts of the province. Local news reports citing government officials said the tornado passed between Ditsbury and Carstairs and struck at least 12 homes. No fatalities were reported. The tornado struck the region on Canada Day, marking the country's 156th anniversary.
of in sport, Eubanks wins in Mallorca for first ATP Tour title. Christopher Eubanks claimed his first ATP title when he beat Adrian Manarino 6164 in the Mallorca final on Saturday. The 27-year-old American, ranked 77th in the world, had never before reached even the semifinals on the main tour. Against the more experienced finalist, Eubanks immediately took the upper hand, breaking in the second game. He broke again in the sixth game and dropped only four points on serve as he took the first set in 23 minutes. Now, Eubanks broke in the opening game of the second set. Manarino reached deuce on the American serve in the sixth game but could not break back. Eubanks, who won in 62 minutes, will break into the top 50 for the first time in his career on Monday, the first day of Wimbledon, where he will play Brazil's Thiago Montero. Manarino, meanwhile, will face Alexander Shevchenko in the first round of the grass court major. Let's check out cycling. Britain's Adam Yates won the opening stage of the Tour de France in Bilbao, out sprinting his twin brother Simon Yates of Jayco. Now, Adam got the better of identical twin Simon to triumph for the first time on the Grand Tour, while his UAE Emirates team leader, Tade Pogachar, finished third, also raising his arms in celebration. Yates took both the first yellow jersey for the overall lead and the first green jersey for sprint points. It was not the first one too for cycling brothers as Andy Schleck beat his brother Frank on stage 18 of the 2011 Tour de France. The younger by a few minutes, Adam led an elite click up the Sondika Hill through a narrow passage formed by enthusiastic flag-waving fans before allowing Simon to do the work most of the way to the line. Simon Yates, long considered the better of the identical twins, is second in the overall standings at eight seconds but appeared deflated after the finale. After the bonuses, Slovenian Pogacar is third overall at 18 seconds. Defending champion Jonas Vingard is another four seconds off the pace after tailing the Slovenian all the way to the line. A stage two is another hilly run through the Basque region from Vitoria to San Sebastian. In football news, former Arsenal, Barcelona and Chelsea midfielder Cesc Fabregas announced his retirement from football on Saturday, revealing his plans to immediately go into coaching. Fabregas won the 2010 World Cup and two European Championships with Spain, two Premier League titles with Chelsea and La Liga with Barcelona. Fabregas set up Andreas Iniesta to score the winning goal against the Netherlands in the 2010 World Cup final in Johannesburg. He began his career in the Barcelona Academy before joining Arsenal as a 16-year-old in 2003. He won the 2005 FA Cup with the Gunners and started the 2-1 loss to Barcelona in the Champions League final the following season. He returned to Barcelona in 2011 and spent three years at Camp Nou before signing for Chelsea. Fabregas left for Monaco in 2019 and spent the past season with Como in Italy's second tier. He will stay at the club to work with the reserve and the youth. Slope-style mountain biker Dewik Godziek defended his Red Bull Roof Right title in Katowice, Poland. In front of his home crowd, Godziek won with a score of 94.25 points, while British rider Jake Atkinson finished second and 18-year-old Chance Moore from Canada for bronze. The riders had three attempts to post their best score in front of a 20,000-strong crowd with their runs all starting on the roof of the International Conference Centre before dropping five metres into three rams. Brazil's Iago Dora claimed victory on home soil at the Rio Pro World Surf League event on Saturday. The win gives Dora the first Champions Tour title of his five-year career and moves the 27-year-old from 12th to 5th in the world rankings. Caitlin Simmers, meanwhile, bagged the second title of her young career in Saquarema, moving her into the top five, entering the penultimate stop of the World Surf League Championship Tour season in Jeffreys Bay 
South Africa and keeping alive her dreams of winning the World Championship in her rookie season. The sights, sounds and speed of NASCAR came to downtown Chicago for the first ever race on city streets. Now, some of the world's best drivers were speeding through well-known Chicago streets like Michigan Avenue and Lakeshore Drive to show off their skills behind the wheel. The racers went through a 12-turn, 2.2-mile course around and through Chicago's Grant Park in about 90 seconds with thousands of racing fans in attendance despite periodic rainfall. That's it from us this evening. In our top story, Prime Minister assures investigation for improvement in customs immigration operation. Join us for updates at noon at 12.30 tomorrow on TV2. We leave you with a gathering of over 10,000 furries in Pennsylvania as part of Anthrocon 2023, celebrating the furry subculture, a community of people who dress up or role play as animal characters. I'm Jessica Lee, Malaysia Madani Teka Perpaduan, Banohi Harapan.